Welcome to the 11th episode of Horse Spirit Arts Gallery's The Artistic Spirit. Tonight, I'm delighted to introduce to you artist Eileen Williams. She's a very talented fabric artist who actually creates sculpture. So we're, that's a gallery phone in the background. Sorry about that. So we're really looking forward to meeting Eileen. But before we do, this is a live Facebook show. So Rob Hicks, come online with us, Rob is gonna tell you how the show works. Hey, Rob. Let me turn my mic on. I almost forgot. I can't hear you. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first I had the audience mic and then I had your mic muted. So, nice. I, so now both mics are hot. Everybody should be hearing me. So nice. hi, hi, how are you? Good, good, good. <clears throat> well, the show would not be possible without you. You were the creator of the idea to have this show. You're the producer of this show. And so I honor you, I honor well, you. It, it's tons of fun for me. Uh, so tonight, interesting, we've got uh, Eileen Williams. I uh, spent the, the better part of the morning with her this morning. Oh my gosh, amazing talent. I mean, it's unfortunate that we're using video and not virtual reality. C Chris, uh, Eileen's husband will appreciate this because we talked about it when, when I was with them this morning. Uh, but her three-dimensional art is, a flat screen just doesn't do it justice because yeah. it is just amazing. Um, so I encourage you guys to stop by the gallery to see the real deal. <laughs> plug, plug. And then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, later we, we've got John Weinstein, uh, who's going to be joining. That should be interesting uh, uh, for a live interview. So we ask that you guys, this is a, this is not a television show. This is a campfire. So just like April and Beverly are in the chat. Let's see who else is here. Um, hey guys. Beverly says exciting. So <clears throat> ask questions, <laughs> uh, both to Eileen and to John. Th again, this is a campfire. This is not live television. We talk with you, not at you. So that's the die tribe. And I hope you guys have a great show. Excellent. All right. So we're excited. First of all, let me tell you some things about Eileen that she would not tell you herself. So she's a very accomplished artist and her work resides in many homes and collections um, in the greater Baltimore DC area. She's also in Virginia and Connecticut as well. She has had many art exhibitions. They include New York, they include the Italian Embassy, the Visionary um, International Visionary Gallery. Also at Virginia, the University of Virginia, she had a solo show with 35 pieces. So. This girl is well known, this woman is well known, and she is rocking it. So let me introduce you to artist Eileen Williams. Hello, everyone. Hey, Hi. it's very nice to have you. Nice being here. So Eileen, as we start, tell us about a little bit about yourself, your background, and your passion for art. Well, I'm actually self-taught and um, I had gone to a community college for a couple of years and basically they introduced me to different medias like um, sculpturing, but I already, um, I am a painter and a sculptor and I enjoy both, but fabric has become my love. Just creating with the fabric and the mixed media has become what I really, really love to do. And, um, and so that's, that's basically it. Well, that's wonderful. I, I can't wait to show everybody this time-lapse video of how you create a piece. So Eileen, can you, um, can you walk us through this? Rob's gonna show the pictures and then if you could talk through what's happening here. Sure, I can do that. Rob, yep. those are pictures of art in the gallery. We would like the blue ones. Mm. 
Eileen, what's happening? Okay, this is a time lapse um, piece that I started. It was actually um, an auction off piece that I had done for the Capital Food Food Bank, and um, I was chosen as one of the um, featured artists. And um, they have a blue jeans ball every year. And uh, what I decided to do when I was doing this piece was to capture what I was doing um, every day. I, I would come in and take a picture right before I started. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to show how I put the layers on and how I begin um, with my art. And this is just the blank canvas. I always start with stretching um, fabric um, um, over um, wooden frames. And then I put on my mask. And um, uh, let's see, and and then uh, Rob, you can go to the next. You can keep going to the next um, picture. And Eileen, in the spirit of a campfire, can you come to one side because we can only see half your face? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Oh, I oh, I see. I'm okay. Yep, there you go. You're good to go. Okay, all righty. So I, then I start just putting on my layers and basically I work from instinct and um, whatever I feel at the time I'm putting them on and I use just different shapes and just keep building a layer, a layer each day um, when I'm making the, um, the pieces. And I've learned just to trust my instinct when I'm working on these um, art pieces. And here's more layers that I've put on. And I decided on this one just to use circles and make them 3D um, on this particular piece. And uh, mostly everything on here so far is uh, made from blue jeans. And wow. the blue jeans were donated um, from different people um, for this particular um, uh, show. That's and really cool. Yeah, this still just more putting on more layers um, as I go along. And actually, I'd done 30 frames, and um, so I just condensed it down to like nine frames. So you could see how I layer each piece. It's amazing. And pretty much, um, I think this is pretty much the last frame. And okay, this one's the last frame. And um, it's it's pretty on this particular picture. It's pretty much 99% uh, finished. That is amazing. So Eileen, many of your pieces of work have um, faces in them. So tell us about that. What does that mean to you? Well, actually I started, I love decorating around the faces and um, just a little background. Um, it was about 20 years ago. I worked for a company um, called Artworks and they sh showed me the craft of um, covering fiberglass animals and um, and we would use upholstery material. And that's basically how I started covering the fabric, the faces with the fabric. And it's something how I took that technique I learned years ago and then using, use it in my artwork today. That is so cool. You also use triangles. So tell us about those sharp edges. What do they mean to you? Actually, it's, it's um, kind of another funny story behind that. Um, it was years ago that my husband had designed a business card and he had a triangle shaped logo on it. And I thought, well, maybe I can use this logo and with, with my business card. And I said, let me try to make some artwork appear triangle. So that's how the triangle just kind of stuck. I, I, I made some artwork with the triangle shapes and I just loved it. So, um, wow. They're so very cool. It's triangle amazing. started. Well, I think that Rob should show us the video of your studio and you can talk to us about what the viewer is seeing. Okay. Well, this is, um, I, I collect all, I guess you can see from top to bottom, I have fabric. Every time I see a piece I like, I get it and just put it away. And in my, um, I like to be able to view all of my fabrics at one time. So, so I can just scan my eyes around the room and You're a fabric hoarder. I am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also I surround myself with creative um, 
pieces like wicker baskets and just different mobiles and anything that is whimsical while I'm working. I love it in my room and it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel creative. So visually, I just love looking looking at, at um, my uh, creative pieces that I have collected. And, um, and I just enjoy fabric. That's what really got me started and inspired. It's just all the beautiful fabrics out there. And I like to combine all of them together to make my art. Wow, that's amazing. How much of your house have you taken over, honey? Probably about a good 70% because I have more things in the basement and oh. it's all in the hallway and a couple of rooms upstairs. So my husband is very patient with, with all, of, all my it's, art supplies. It's more there. <laughs> yeah. Is that Christian, your husband, in the background? Yes, he's here. <laughs> uh, this he is can... all about you, honey. Oh, no, I just want him to say hi. Hi, <laughs> <my> Christian. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Eileen, what are you doing now? Well, actually, right now um, in my room, I'm working on an older piece, and I am um, I am trying. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the um, here's where how I actually cover my uh, art pieces and I usually anything that's hard like cardboard plastic um, uh, wood pieces I use and here you see me covering a piece of um, of um, of a frame that I'm going to put on the piece I'm currently working on and I take the frame and usually I'm just trying to place it and see where it will look good on on my art. Um, in fact, I actually finished the, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not following. Uh, this actually is uh, a piece of work I had done. And with this piece, with, you see the couch and the pillows? Um, I actually got my inspiration for um, this particular piece called United. And it was just from what, looking at this couch and the pillows. Wow. Um, this is another piece I had done with butterflies. And um, um, Rob took a really close up. And I like to use repurposed um, pieces to make my butterflies. Sometimes I can actually buy the actual wooden piece or a butterfly um, that's made out of wood and then just cover it. But most of these are just handmade um, with my fabric. That's a lot of work, girl. Yeah, that's everything is covered with the fabric, but um, it's very enjoyable doing. I don't mind taking the time out and working with it. And and as you can see my layers. Oh, now this one is in your gallery. It's called Aqua. I really enjoy doing this piece um, because it, I always wanted to do an underwater um, uh, scene. And I actually handpicked all of these fabrics to make you feel like you're underwater. It's amazing. It's 10 and a half inches deep. Is yes. It, Rob, will you go back and show us that photo again? Full screen if you can. The blue one that you just had. Just show it full screen because it is spectacular. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this is the yes. one. Yes. I, I really enjoyed uh, working with this particular piece and putting all the um, pieces on here. And this one, I really worked from instinct because a lot of times I just felt I needed to put the pieces a certain way, but I didn't know why. So I said, I'm just going to trust and put it there. And then maybe a couple of days I realized, oh, this is why I actually put it there and to get the layers on. Well, it, it's, a, it's absolutely stunning. It really is. So Rob, will you show us some other pieces of Eileen's art that are in the gallery right now? Yeah, but let me, so there's a, a few people in here that we want to say hi to uh, and the comments that have come in. So, um, so Iris Grundler says, hi, Robin, Rob and Eileen. Hi. And Chris Curcio says, wow. Um, <laughs> Nancy Lee Davis says, I'm so excited to see your process at last. Thank you. And uh, Mar, oh, I'm butchering her name. Margia, Margia says, wow, magical. And uh, April Rempos is beautiful. Um, Carlos Cepeda joined. Hi, Carlos. And hey, Carlos. Uh, oh, so Beverly Hunter says uh, to Eileen, "What do you attach with?" 
And uh -oh. I'll, so I'll let you read that. Uh, I'll read two more comments and then you can answer Beverly's question. And so April says, love the fish, almost missed those. And Lori Hansen says, I agree, stunning. So um, yes, yeah, so I guess just uh, Beverly's question about uh, uh, attaching the, uh, the fabric. Um, actually, I use hot glue and I really have learned to respect the hot glue um, the form of <laughs> thermal plastic adhesive. And what I do when I use it, it melts into the fabric and it gives me a nice hold. And you, and you have to be careful because certain uh, materials like metal or um, uh, uh, plastic, you have to put an extra backing on it so it, it will attach with the hot glue. Eileen, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, but nope. could you repeat what you just said? Oh, sure. I, I was, um, uh, the, I use hot glue and that's what I use to attach uh, my pieces. And it's a form of the um, thermoplastic adhesive and it melts into my fabric when I'm actually using it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you do have to be careful because if you're using metal or plastic or leather um, or vinyl, you have to put an extra backing on that when you're using it, just so make sure it, it does um, adhere. Hey, Aline, there was one question that I missed from uh, Chris Garcia. She said, if you weren't doing upholstery art, what would you be doing? Actually, I would be doing my painting or sculpturing. I enjoy the, uh, the both. And also, I love flowers, so I do wedding bouquets so, and centerpieces, so that's another thing I enjoy. Wow. You are multi-talented and a fabric hoarder. Oh, <laughs> I am a hoarder. <laughs> hey, hey, Rob, will you show us some more pieces of Eileen's work now? Some of these are not in the gallery, but they are examples of your work, which are spectacular. Yeah, this one is a smaller piece I had done. It's actually um, like a nine by 12, I believe. And because some people have started asking for smaller pieces. And um, another thing I wanted to mention about my pieces, when I do them, in fact, this one is pretty much the same size. I love to do the backs and really make sure that the backs are um, also neatly done with the fabrics and for me it just sets the standard and it makes me feel like everything is neat and then I can start layering on the front so when I'm doing art piece. It really helps in the gallery because I can put your work in the front window and then when you look at it from the back it's still cool. Thank you. Oh now this piece is um in your gallery and basically I just love the fabric on um, this particular piece and I just there's two faces on here I'm not sure if you can see but I just started layering and layering um, the different elements like the squares and the triangles on here and um, this was another one I just love the fabric. This is really beautiful and that photo it, as good as it is Rob it just does not do your pieces justice. They are just really amazing. And there's so many intricate parts to them. Oh, thank you. So, um, Rob, will you show us a couple more pictures? Well, so, um, so Margia, Margie, oh, I'm struggling with the name and I'm so sorry, but she says, how did you start your journey as a fabric artist? Ooh Actually, that's a great question. Um, it started with when I'm going into buy my supplies for my painting and sculpturing, I just started noticing the beautiful fabrics and I said, I have to do some artwork. So I just started experimenting and experimenting. And this is how it evolved into um, these 3D pieces. And um, basically it's, it's, it was just basically the fabrics that um, started me doing this particular artwork. So Did you have Marcy anything? Oh, so I was just going to read another comment. Uh, so Marcy Wolf Hubbard says, Dave and I are watching and enjoying hearing about your work and seeing the artwork close up. We'll have to see more in person. Well, thank you. That'd be great. So Eileen, is there anything that happened in your personal life that sort of got you focused on this fabric art? Um, no, actually, it's just the love of art. And I've always loved art ever since I was... Um, young and I guess a lot of artists pretty much say the same thing they started when they were young and I would fill my time at when I would 
on school break, just doing different projects from beadwork to macrame to painting, just just doing everything. And it's just the love of art. And I am very thankful for the gift to be able to do my art. That, that really is just, it's enjoyable too. Yeah. Okay, Rob, some more pictures, please. Oh, this piece is um, called United. And there are certain things that just prompt my imagination sometimes. And the one thing that prompted my imagination was actually a picture of a couch with pillows. Because I was flipping through a magazine and I thought, oh, faces, I can make different um, fabric faces. And actually, um, that's how this particular piece came about. In fact, I, I do have the picture. Oh, this is the picture of the couch. And this inspired this particular picture, United. So it's kind of a strange thing, but this is how I came up with that. Wow, that, that is something. That is something. I mean, what would you say to somebody who was starting out in, you know, using fabric like this? What would you want to say? I would just say, do not be afraid to experiment. And even if you mess up, that's okay. Just, just keep going at it and, um, and just, just let your artistic just flow. That's great. So in closing, Eileen, what else would you want people to know? Um, I would just like to say that the artwork that I do comes from my heart mm -hmm. and um, I'm very thankful that I can do this artwork and for those who just don't be afraid to try new things and even if it's different sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader and just go for it and believe in yourself. Yeah. And well that's wonderful. I am thrilled to have you in the gallery have your artwork you are just a delightful person, a very talented artist, and you have a very kind husband. I do think that Christian should stick his head in here and we should get to say hey to him. Hey. Okay, so why do you want to subject these people to this? <laughs> I think that really has changed my opinion of you, Robin. I thought you were kind and considerate also, but that's pretty cruel. <laughs> Well, Christian, it's nice to have you. And I know that she just loves you with all her heart and soul. Yes, it's I do. mutual after yeah. 35 years. Yes, That's I so do. great. That's so great. Well, oh. Eileen, anything else? Yes, I would like to say a personal note to you, Robin. And I just want to thank you for your warm heart and your actually caring about the artists that you have mm -hmm. in your gallery. I think you have a great selection of artists and you're just a wonderful person to work with. Mm. And anybody visiting, they'll feel that warmth in your gallery too. Thank you so much, Eileen. Well, so, so ladies, I, I want to add something personal, just because it, it uh, the, the reoccurring theme that I get with horse spirits is 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 like I, I think it's it's artists uh, th that are like s crazy smarty pants people. Like I mean, Robin, you're a freaking nuclear physicist, and <laughs> and and Eileen's husband works for John Hopkins Applied uh, Science Laboratory. It's like you have all these brainiacs uh, that, that are, 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 are artists at the gallery. It's the, like the coolest thing in the world. We call them nerds. <laughs> We're <laughs> artist <laughs> nerds. That's exactly what Chris and I said today when we, when we met. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it is. They're a great group of artists, all of them. That's well, Eileen, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. Yeah. For all so, the great pictures you took. My next guest tonight is John Weinstein. So um, John Weinstein is a councilman and he's an elected um, official. He's a councilman um, for historic Ellicott City where we had the devastating flood where my gallery is located. So I, I just want you to know that our recovery, John had such a major part to do with that. He, um, he came home from a vacation on Italy, from Italy that they planned for a long time. He helped us clean out our galleries. He, in my particular gallery, he spackled the walls and his wife, Margaret, painted furniture. But it wasn't just for me, it was for all the businesses. He did so much. And he did a lot to secure resources for us, you know, 
FEMA, state level resources, et cetera. And to this day, he still works to make sure studies are being done to make things better for us here. So John, in one brief minute, first of all, welcome. Hey, John. Hey, how you doing? Good. First, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's really my pleasure. I really enjoyed listening to Eileen and watching her uh, describe how she did her, her art. And uh, I'm a little worried. I've got no sort of artistic thing to add. Although I think some people might say I have a different kind of BS artist type thing. Hey. <laughs> As a politician, I'm, I'm going to take my own shots at myself. There you go. There you go. I will, for listening. I will say, throw some at me. <laughs> we were expecting your office like to be your real office where you had a flag and, you know, Howard County, et cetera. And I see a Rocky photo behind you. I'm at home and sitting, uh, you know, in, in, in the cave uh, in front of my favorite movie poster. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. Well, let's begin. So, John, sure. in one minute... Can you tell the viewers what happened on the 30th of July, 2016? What happened to historic Ellicott City? Yeah, well, you're, you're very brave asking a politician to answer a question in a minute. So um, I'll, do, I'll do my best. It, it, it was uh, the most devastating event in the, the uh, historic district's uh, long history. And uh, in just a mere couple hours, uh, an unbelievable amount of water uh, came from the sky and then down the hill and nearly wiped out the, the town entirely. The damage, uh, many people who came through town after the flood did, commented it looked like a, a set of a, a movie disaster film, you know, and it was uh, hard to imagine the cars piled up upon one another inside stores, entire walls and floors missing. Uh, and, and parts of the street completely gone. Uh, and, and the saddest part, of course, was the loss of a, of a couple of lives uh, that evening. And, and a friend of ours all on the street uh, a, a couple months later, uh, somebody who fell, uh, fell off a ladder and, 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 and didn't survive. It, you know, it, it's, it's hard to, to summarize it, but um, uh, it, it was worse than anyone could have imagined. And even today, I still can't imagine what it was that day, especially as I walk down the street and see what it looks like today. Yeah. So we'll just focus for one more minute on that night. Right. Um, we had, I think, six inches of rain in, um, excuse me, we had, yeah, six inches of rain in two hours and two inches of rain in 15 minutes. Is that right, John? Yeah, I think it's about six and a half inches, but yeah, the 15 uh, minutes, so uh, two inches in about 15 minutes. It's, it's hard to fathom that in terms of the volume that, that comes down. It just, it had not happened in recorded history. There's some record from about 1868 where there was, they, they claimed more than that, but they didn't have the technology we did to measure uh, it, it, it's, it's hard to fathom that kind of, that kind of volume. Yeah. Well, I'll say for me personally, I was at the gallery that night and within 20 minutes I had water on the floor and, um, the water reached five feet in my gallery and I'm a couple feet off the ground and I was holding the door because I wasn't thinking clearly, you know, I was just trying to fight back the water and, um, Finally, I went upstairs and, you know, um, the water going by at the bottom of the hill reached between 12 and 15 feet. It was, it was just staggering. Um, and the, you know, the water lines and sewage lines and gas lines, they all got crossed and there was. No, it's amazing that, that worse things did not happen. You're right. There were, there were electrical lines down with gas lines, the spewing gas. And you say 12 to 15 feet, that was above ground. I understand the channel that the water typically runs in is about 12 to 15 feet deep, right? So wow. the water level from the point at which it usually flows was well in excess of 20 feet above uh, where it typically goes. So it, it's hard to, to imagine, you know, your, your gallery and the, then you go down uh, just a, a couple of storefronts and it was up to the second floor. Um, yeah. yeah, it was again just hard, to, hard, to, hard to imagine. And, and as you said, I was not there that day. And actually, my wife comments it's a good thing because I probably would have run down to town, and, and she would have known she, I would have gotten hurt doing something stupid. Uh, but uh, yeah, we were we were in Spain, not Italy. Though I love Italy, oh. I'd like to try and get there. 
Um, and uh, we had just arrived on our vacation when I woke up the next morning and my phone was filled with uh, flash messages uh, and voice messages uh, about the horrible events. And at that point, when I woke up, it was only it ended about seven hours before. So it was, uh, it was still about uh, about three or four in the morning. Uh, no, actually, it was about two in the morning uh, where you guys were. And, and uh, oh, it was midnight. I'm sorry. It was midnight. I, I remember the time because it was six in the morning where I was six hour difference. Yeah. So it had just ended about about three hours before. Wow. All right. So now that we have talked and sort of given people a sense of how bad it was, now I'd like you to tell them what has happened since then and where we are. Well, we're, we, it's, I'll be, uh, I'll try and be blunt here. We're in the best place in America is <laughs> where we are. It, it's just, it's just hard to, uh, to, to explain the, the picture I try to, 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 to paint with, uh, there you go. I got my art, uh, really <laughs> art, uh, analogy there, but the, the picture we're trying to paint with what it looked like that, that next morning, uh, it, it it's remarkable, unbelievable that, that here just, just seven months, eight months later, uh, the street is 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 back again. It's vibrant. Uh, we had people come in from uh, disaster teams come in from Pennsylvania, from Colorado. I had a county council person from Colorado come to town and talk how her town had had a devastating flood and fire seven years before, and they had not come even close to where we were in the months after our our disaster. Uh, the the Town is back. We have about ninety percent of the businesses of businesses have reopened on Main Street. Uh, we've got plans for a few more opening in the in the spring into the into the summer. Uh, granted, a few that were were on the street before couldn't come back, uh, and but we've got some new ones that are just making the street even more vibrant. Uh, I was. Uh, just driving up and down. And so I live up the street. So I, I'm on Main Street literally every day, at least twice a day. Um, and uh, just on an average day now, you see the, the foot traffic really returning and, and people enjoying uh, the new restaurant in, in, in the Manor Hill Tavern and the old restaurants that have reopened up and down the street, down at Phoenix, all the way up at Turtles and, and at Lapa Lapa's uh, EC Pops where you, you, you know, when you when I thought, oh, a popcorn store is open, these guys put in an amazing store that's an attraction in and of itself. And I tell you, anytime there's a parking spot in front of that store, if I'm driving through town, I pull over. <laughs> I, I have a lot of popcorn in my house. So, so the stores that have come back and the new stores that are there, it's just a whole exciting vibe. But but the thing is, um, it's is despite the that we're we're excited about stores coming back and and things coming back to life here it, it never really dimmed because life was here all the time the people who make up the stores the residents the the, the property owners uh, you know we might have been closed down but we were working real hard and people were, were were supporting each other and just demonstrating how amazing the community is how amazing the individuals are that make up what ellicott city is uh We've had, you've heard the question, well, why are you rebuilding? It's just going to flood again. Well, it's people like you who, who make up that town that, that create the essence of what is Ellicott City. That's why we rebuild, because it's not about the things. It's not about the buildings. It's about what we create with our community and how we support one another and how we push out our, our, our you know, our love of each other out and everybody can hear it. So. I, I completely agree. I mean, the best thing out of this was I saw the very best of people, yeah. and the very best of humanity. I had complete strangers. I mean, they gave us money. They helped clean out the gallery. They, you know, helped us rebuild. I mean, I didn't even know these people. And the Arts Council came through right. with grants for our artists because um, insurance, bless their little hearts, they won't pay my claim, even though I had flood insurance and a lot of businesses down here, they won't, insurance companies won't cover. And the reason that's important is because the community stepped up and they gave us money and they helped us fix things up. And I have never felt more part of a community than I do in Ellicott City. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, the, the wonderful thing uh, about uh, what you just said, 
the people who came out to help you. But that story was repeated every step up and down the street. And every store uh, in a lot of the residences, uh, it's still going on now on the West End, you know, uh, where where folks, uh, the devastation was so bad up there and it sort of got lost a little bit in the uh, the rush to get things open on, uh, in, the, in the business district. But right now there are people who are working every day, volunteers still out helping folks get their homes repaired. Uh, and these are historic homes, old homes that take a lot more care uh, to, to do it. But everybody's got stories like that, Robin. And it's amazing, uh, you know, that, it, that we're, one great story, uh, it was uh, Gretchen down at Bean Hollow. We were, we we're at the opening and, um, and a couple, a young couple, uh, customers of hers built her cabinets. They, they built it for her. And the funny piece was at the end, they don't even drink coffee. All right. They, yeah. they just, they're, they're tea drinkers and they, they just love the place. And, and as an example, like her, her place, I spent, I spent a lot of days there. It's a lot of, it's a great place to have coffee meetings early in the morning before the day gets going and sort of my second or third office. In fact, the day before the flood, I had three meetings the, that morning, the 29th, seven, eight, nine in the morning. Um, but it's, it's, it's places like that that meant so much to people, not because it was where they got coffee, it's because where they hung out with the people they really liked, where they had the conversations that, that were meaningful uh, about life, what's going on, what's going on in the town, what's going on uh, in the community, that there's a little selfishness, right? We needed Bean Hollow to open again so we could have those conversations. We needed, we needed you to reopen so we could talk about the cool art, the stuff that Eileen, I remember walking into the store and seeing Eileen's piece in the window, it was the it was uh, just, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, wow, that is just striking. And there's enough of those sorts of pieces in your place to make it. I mean, if you charge admission, I, I bet people would. <laughs> I'll get a cut, though, if you start charging. Um, but, uh, but that's the thing. It's why I love this town. It's why Margaret and I chose to move up the street when we were looking for a home. When our family started to grow, and we needed a little bit of a bigger place to live. Uh, we picked uh, just up the street so we could spend a lot of time. Uh, in the historic district. That's so wonderful. Thank you, John. You hey, know, can I, I, read a, can I read a few comments that have come in? Uh -oh, yeah. Only if you're good. <laughs> they're all good. Actually, they're they're phenomenal for you. So Nancy Lee Davis says, thank you, John, for helping Robin and all of the artists. Uh, Chris Garcia says, thank you, John. Uh, Beverly Hunter says, how grateful we are. Um, Lori Hansen says, yes, so much love and strength in Robin. Holiday and the Ellicott City community. Thank you for all you do. I'm going to pause till the dog stops barking. Dogs love me. <laughs> Whose dogs are they? They're Rob's dog. I was worried about my dogs barking, so I don't feel so bad. The show has gone to the dogs. <laughs> oh, thank you, Chris. He said the show has gone to the dogs. Nice. That's great. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Well, you know, John, in addition to what you said, I think it's also the business owners because mm -hmm. I have really grown to care about Gretchen, you know, um, the owner of Bean Hollow. And I feel closer in this community to the people, the business owners, you know, everyone yeah. as a result of this. And mm -hmm. so, John, my next question is for you to tell people why should they come to Ellicott City? You well, if, if we didn't convince them to come down with all we said so far, then... The then we don't want them. <laughs> John. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's because it, it really, I mean, we've actually won a lot of accolades from outside our community, you know, U.S. News and, and CNN and, and, uh, and Forbes. I don't know. There are a bunch of them that all have said Ellicott City, Columbia, where Eileen and Chris live. Uh, these are the places where people want to live. They're places that people want to come. New York Times featured us. And I remember that for several weeks, you walk up and down the street, there were all cars from New York and New Jersey and Connecticut. Um, I think Southern Living featured us on the, on the cover of their magazine. Uh, obviously, Washington Post regularly is talking about what cool things are going on on here. So it is just, it is something for everything. The amazing thing about uh, Ellicott City, and, and this is something that I think it was in the New York Times, was it's the one place in America, perhaps, you could get a tattoo uh, have high tea and then go have a, a gourmet French restaurant. Yeah. I mean, where else can you, you do that? And, and all the things in between, you can go get dessert uh, down at Gretchen's place or you start the day early enough, you can get coffee there that you can go to cool art galleries like yours and buy fine art 
of varying sizes from things mm -hmm. you put in your pocket to things you have to have installed in your house. I've got one of those pieces uh, in my house. Um, you know, there, there is nothing you can't find in our our main street in, in the historic district, nothing. I challenge you. Uh, well, okay, it's, it's not a good men's clothing store, but we're working on it, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we absolutely love our town for sure. And John, in closing, is there anything else you'd want people to know? Uh, that I have, they haven't been here recently. Uh, they, they've got to come back and see what, what the town has become, what it's come back from. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny that, that uh, at the bottom of the street, we have a restaurant called the Phoenix because it really does capture uh, what the essence of the town is, how we've risen from this disaster. And, uh, oh, see, I get emotional every time, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard. I make it all the way through and I always did. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you haven't been here while, well, you got to come back. If you've never been here, you, you're missing a whole bunch. Uh, so that's, that's what I'd have to say. Uh, about why people should come. Thank you, John. And we are so thankful for every person who comes down here. Oh yeah. That's an absolute blessing to us. Great, thank you very much for having me. This was fun, I'll, I'll come on and maybe I've got some like art from middle school or something. Uh, that would be no, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, John, bye-bye. All right, so let me just thank, first of all, Eileen Williams, who was our fabulous artist for tonight. Yay! Yay. Let's thank Rob Hicks, who the show would not be possible without. Yay. Yay! Let's thank John Weinstein, our councilman, who was instrumental in re resurrecting. So give you the little heart, and we give you the little hand. <laughs> And so in closing, let me tell you about what's going to happen next week. So next week is May 11th, same bat channel, same bat time. It is Thursday night, seven o'clock. And we will be speaking with a very incredible painter, Deborah McClowski. She does pastels. She does colored pencils. She does mixed media. She is absolutely amazing. And she's one of the most detailed, diverse artists. She's also a very fun person. She has minions in her art studio. You know, those little tiny minions, yellow minions, and that's just adorable. And she's wicked smart. So uh, it'll be a really fun show, and I hope that you'll join us. So in closing, it was lovely to be with you tonight, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. <laughs>